Hey everyone, welcome back this week. We're going to be wrapping up digital citizenship this week um, by focusing on our digital footprint and identity online. So we're gonna talk about how you are leaving tracks every time you are online. Our big question for today is how does our online activity affect the digital footprints of ourselves and others? So our learning objectives um, are define the term digital footprint and identify the online activities that contribute to it, identify ways you are and are not in control of your digital footprints, and understand what responsibilities you have for um, the, digital, the digital footprint of yourself and others. So let's take a look at some images here. Think in your head, what do you notice about this image? What can you infer about the animal that left this footprint? Maybe you're thinking, hmm, it looks kind of maybe like a dog or an animal that walks on four legs. It's only got four toes and it sure looks like it's been there for quite some time. The ground looks really dry. What do you notice about this image? What can you infer about this animal? If you said it looks like a fossil, you'd be right. Fossils have been around for a very long time. It certainly just looks like there's a skeleton that's been left behind. Your digital footprint will stay around a long time as well. It's a record of what you do online, including the sites you visit and the things you post. It can also include things that others post that involve you, such as pictures or comments. So your digital footprint, whether we realize it or not, is being left behind. All right, so in this activity, you're going to be reading some things about Camilla. Camilla spends a lot of time online, and for each activity, you're going to decide what it might tell about her and whether she is in control of this activity or not in control. So a thumbs up will be in control, a thumbs down will be not in control. All right, so here they go. Camilla appears in a video of the school play that her parents post on a video sharing site. Is she in control? or not in control. If you said she's not in control, you're correct. Her parents decided to post that video. She posts comments about dancing videos on YouTube. Is she in control or not? If you said Camilla's in control of what she posts, you're correct. Camilla appears in a picture her friend posted on social media. Is she in control? or not in control of this post. If you said she's not in control, you're right. This picture that her friend posted will stay a part of her digital footprint even though she did not put it online. She creates a wish list of things she wants for her birthday on her parents' online shopping account. Is she in control or not in control? If you said she's in control of what she's typing, on her birthday wish list, you're correct. And last, she appears on the top scorers list of an online video game that she plays regularly. Is she in control or not in control? If you said she's not in control of what's being posted, you're correct. This is why when you are playing a game online, you never want to use your first and last name or any other identifying information because we never know how those games are going to put out the top scorer lists. You have responsibilities at home and you might have responsibilities for your schoolwork. A responsibility is simply a duty you have to yourself or others. When we're online, it's a, we have a responsibility to take care of ourselves and others. So take a minute. What do you think are some of our responsibilities for being online? both to ourselves and to others. If you need a minute, go ahead and click pause. And then we're gonna talk about them. Our responsibilities to ourselves are that we show our best self when we're online. This is really important that you pause and think about what you're about to post, either about yourself or others. When you post mean things about others, it says a lot about who you are. Only post things you're comfortable showing publicly. Remember, things that are online, even um, a text that you send, it can be um, put out there in the form of a screenshot. So you really have to be careful and mindful about what you're putting out there 
so that you are showing your true self online. Responsibilities to others, things like getting permission before posting a picture of someone or tagging them in a post. Camilla didn't have any control over the picture her friend posted. Helpfully, her friend asked her first for permission to post that, but it's always good to ask someone before you post something about them. And last, the golden rule, treat others online how you would want to be treated. Our digital footprints say a lot about us and it builds over time. You're young users of um, digital tools. So your digital footprint is starting right now or for the, from the time that you've created accounts. So you really need to be mindful about what you are um, putting out online. We define who we are. You have a say in some of what gets posted online. Sometimes it will be out of your control. So just remember, keep your private information secure and do your best to create a positive digital footprint. In the rest of our time, I want to tell you about a typing challenge that we're doing um, here at Maddox. So I wanted to include you with that. If you go into the yellow typing club folder and log in with Google, um, you will get into my typing class and I'll be able to see your progress and your stats. So the top three leaders will be posted each week. Um, the leaders may be Maddox students. They may be virtual academy students. Um, so we're looking at a few things like words per minute, accuracy. So I'll be posting um, a leaderboard each week. And then after you do about 10 minutes of typing today, you will have free choice on our choice board and that's located in the red folder. So I'll show you really quickly. If you just click on this long hyperlink here, it will take you to my typing club class. And then um, you all know this, but you can then go back to, oops, I clicked on the wrong thing. You can go back to my folder after you've typed for about 10 minutes. And in that red digital exploration, you're going to see a few new things. So I have taken down the read alouds and put a few things up. Um, we are not ready for Tinkercad yet, so I want you to hold off on Tinkercad. Um, the district has an Adobe Spark account where you can create a virtual slideshow that turns into a movie and you can add music to it. Um, Google Maps is always interesting to explore. Pixlr is a video editor. We will do a project with this later in the year. Um, Earthquake simulations. So if you're interested in earth science, you might want to check that out. And then the slime video takes us to a virtual tour of the International Space Station. They actually took slime out to see what would happen with slime at zero gravity. And then a hidden objects game. So if you enjoy doing that, um, there's a digital version. So take a few minutes, make a free choice, um, and I will see you next week.